Hey guys, Gamma here. Uh, on the last video I saw there were some requests for uh, how to get in orbit and uh, how to deal with inclination. So I've uh, built a ship and I will try to demonstrate uh, how to do those things and also cover uh, some common misconceptions with the uh, how to get into orbit. Um, so we're on 0.19 now. I know at this current time 0.19.1 or 0.2 is out, but as you saw I'm on 0.049 because I haven't seen a need to update yet. Um, I did build this ship on another save, and so I don't have to build it again, but I will show it to you before I launch it. It's called Orbit. It's got six boosters, two big fuel tanks, uh, an LV-45, a decoupler, another LV-45, one fuel tank, a decoupler, an ASAS, and the module. I know this will get into orbit and have plenty of fuel to mess around with inclination. Uh, if you use an, uh, a, uh, an efficient, sorry, an efficient ascent trajectory, uh, if you do the misconception, which I'm going to try to show you guys first here, I don't think this thing will even make orbit. Um, so the trick uh, when you go into orbit is to go up high enough to get out of the thick part of the atmosphere and then start turning over so that you get the horizontal velocity by the time you reach your vertical maximum so that you miss the planet when you fall back down. Um, a lot of people go straight up to the altitude they want to orbit and then start trying to go horizontally and that's an immense waste of fuel and it's going to be really hard for me to do that because I'm so used to turning earlier in the, in the orbit. So right now, I'm just using the boosters to get me up. I'm not using any of my fuel. I have zero throttle. I have no need to use throttle uh, because I have fins that will steer me through all the atmosphere. When these separate, I'll fire up the rocket engine, separate them, and uh, I'm just going to keep burning up as much as I don't want to. Uh, about this point here, about 10 kilometers is when I would start turning over. But we're just going to keep this thing pointed up to uh, 100 kilometers. It's going to be our target orbit. I will wait till my Apple apps reaches 100 kilometers, then I will cut the engines, drift up there, point sideways, and try to achieve an orbit. Uh, I don't think this thing has the fuel to orbit that way, but I do know that I can get, I can use only half of this last tank here to achieve 100 kilometer orbit in a, uh, a much more efficient trajectory. So yeah, we're just, uh, we're waiting for this thing to burn up to 100 kilometers. Um, not much else I can do. Hopefully YouTube will allow me to upload this 60 FPS video, which should look pretty compared to uh, the 30 FPS we usually see. Also, Jeb is quite happy with the new animation system. I don't know if I can look at him. No, if I'm within the cockpit, I can't. But uh, they do this animation outside of the cockpit too. And it's it's It hasn't gotten old for me yet, seeing Jeb all excited about that. So yep, still burning up, pointing straight up, and this is again the uh, inefficient, or I can't say wrong, but it's it's not the best way to achieve an orbit, because uh, you waste a lot of fuel doing this, and I'll look like an idiot if I try to demonstrate this, and it doesn't actually use any more fuel, but I'm pretty sure it's going to. So yep, burning up, up to about 800 meters a second, pointing straight up at 40 kilometers. I'm just going until this hits a hundred, at which point I'll cut my engines, drift up there, and there we go, cut the engines, we're at 50 kilometers, and when I get to this apple apps of at a hundred kilometers, I'm going to burn sideways in an attempt to achieve an orbit. It feels so wrong to do so because I know this is going to waste a lot of fuel. The key thing to note is my orbital velocity when I reach my apple apps which is going to be something around probably in the 200 range. Just using some time warp. And yeah, 10 seconds will start turning over and burning. Yeah, 164 meters a second is what I was reaching at Apple Apps. So now I'm just turning the ship sideways. And you can see it's lengthening the uh, orbit a little bit. And we're about to run out of fuel, so I'll be ready for staging. You can also see that we're falling quite rapidly because we don't have the acceleration to go sideways fast enough. But it's still burning sideways. 
I'm about to run out of fuel. At which point I'll stage it. Not even going a kilometer per second yet. Firing up the next stage. Now our orbit's expanding a bit. And it'll be a question of whether or not we have enough fuel to actually finish this burn now though. Uh, where that we're dropping quite rapidly. I'm actually going to burn up a little bit to stop the apple from climbing like that. Alright, that's still in the atmosphere. Alright, that's out of the atmosphere, so we're at a 90 by 138 kilometer orbit. Um, not exactly the most efficient thing in the world. But it does seem to have worked. Which is impressive to me, I didn't think that that would work. And we're left with 40.49 units of fuel. Now let's go try the other way. I'm going to have to remember that number, 40.49 units of fuel. Jeb's still quite happy. Not running any engines yet, no need to. These get pretty low, I'll throttle up the full throttle and start my turn at about 10 kilometers. And the trick here is gradual turning. Not just going straight over, but actually kind of slowly pointing your ship in the direction that you want to go. <laughs> Jeb still very excited. And this is just for me, um, and it's obviously not the best trajectory, but I try to point a few degrees over until I hit about 25 kilometers or 400 meters a second and then I'll point at the at the 90 here which is which is 45 degrees towards the 90 or, or halfway horizontal I am just waiting and coming up to that looks like we're going to line up basically 25 right away to get to 40, 400 meters a second Cool, now I'm pointing 45 degrees to the east. I'm going to wait for my apple apps to climb to about 60, uh, 55, 60 or so, and then I will start pointing perfectly horizontal. We will just wait for that to climb. By the time it gets to about 50, I'll start pointing over a little bit. By the time I get to 60, I'm going to want to be on the horizon. Uh, 59 is fine. And now the goal is to just keep it pointed on the horizon and stage at the right time. You'll notice the apoapsis is traveling further away from me, but as it does that, it's also increasing its arc. So if I put it way over here when it gets to 100, that arc is probably going to be stretching to about here. I'm not going to need that much fuel to uh, finish obtaining the orbit. So we're about ready to stage here. And it should burn out about now. Fire up the other rocket. I'm just going to climb really quick because I have a lot of acceleration here. I'm just going to hit X when I get see that number hit 100. There we are, 100, and you can see that I'm basically almost already in orbit. I'm not gonna, it's not going to take much fuel at all to finish that off, so I'll just time warp up there. Do 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 do. Until we get out of the atmosphere. Now I can go into real time warp. And now that we're basically here, I'm just going to get the ship pointed right quick. What did I have, 40.49 units of fuel the first time by? I think so. I think we'll have a lot more this time. And a lot more control over the orbit. 
Yeah, there's 96 by 103. Let's just burn up a little bit. I don't remember which way to burn to do this. I'm just gonna travel around quick. Ooh, by 123. Whoops. I should have stopped the first time I had it, but I'm pretty sure I'll still have more fuel, so it'll still make my point rather clear. Um, just pointing around here. Yeah, it was like, what, 90 something by 120, so we're at 100 by 120. Let's check our fuel. 108, so we've well over double our fuel left that we did the first time. And I even made some other corrections, and we're actually in a much larger orbit. Um, so yeah, hopefully that can clear up a lot of the misconception I see. Like, even on Scott Manley's videos, people are telling him he doesn't know how to go into orbit, he should be going straight up. That's just not right. It's it's not true at all. Um, that covered, I want to get into inclination here. And I'm going to do that with the moon as a reference, because the moon in Kerbal Space Program orbits at the equator of Kerbin. So, to have a zero descending node and a zero ascending node with the moon means that you're perfectly over the equator, which is a really nice orbit to have. Uh, to demonstrate what inclination is, I'm just going to point the ship north. We'll watch this blue line, because its angle will start to change. This side will go up, because that's sort of the north. I'm traveling left to right. And if I point north, I'm going to be trying to point my ship towards the top here, towards the north pole, which will pull this end of the orbit up towards the pole and this end towards the south pole. So let's just fire up the engine and watch that happen. You can see now I've given myself a, about a 5 or 10 degree inclination. At the same time my orbit has actually extended a little bit and you can compensate for that by burning a little bit east a little bit west while you're doing it. Uh, but for these small kinds of maneuvers it usually doesn't matter. You see the ascending node and descending node uh, they move around a bit while I do this. So I'm going to go at the high end of my of my inclination here, and I'm just going to burn again. I don't think it, this time it shouldn't change the ascending or descending nodes that much. Oh yeah, there they go. They, they travel a little bit around. And what these are is they indicate straight lines between a point in your orbit and where it lines up with the moon's orbit. I'm trying to get... These camera controls are kind of hard to do. But you can kind of see when my ship comes down around here, this line will be a straight line between here and the moon's orbit. And when you're trying to cancel out an inclination, you want that to be zero. Because that means, uh, at any point in time, if you have a zero inclination, you can draw a straight line between you and the target. Which means you have a lot more opportunities to hit the target, versus when I have an inclination like this, I only have an opportunity to hit the target when I'm at this point, or this point, while way out here in the orbit. Um, and for the moon, it doesn't really matter. It has a quite a large sphere of influence, but for getting to some of the other planets, you really do want a, uh, a nice small inclination versus 7 degrees like I have here. So the way to fix that is descending node basically means you're going towards the south pole. Ascending node means you're going towards the north pole. So to fix that, at the descending node, you want to burn north towards the north pole to get away from going towards the south pole. So let's just time warp here. And I should be demonstrating this with uh, maneuver nodes, but I really hardly ever use them. So I'm just going to do it the way I used to have to do it by eyeballing it. I'm going to get my ship pointed north, it's still pointed north, and I got 7 degrees of burn, so I'm actually going to burn a little early here. Let's see if I fire the engine up. Uh, this should start to level out. And the node's traveling away from me, so. 0 0.4, 3, 2. It's a 0.3 degrees. I burned a little early. So now i got to wait till I get to that end and burn again. Although 0.3 degrees for going to the moon is fine. This is still my descending node, so it means I'm still heading south, so I still want to point north. And this time I'm going to wait till I'm right on top of it, because it's only a third of a degree I need to change. 0.2, 0.1. Zero point zero. So we're perfectly inclined. At any point we burn outwards, we would cross the moon's orbit, except there's no way this thing has enough fuel to do that. 
granted, it still has more fuel after messing around with the orbit than the previous one did. So hopefully, I really hope people can can understand that you don't need to, you don't need to go straight up and then turn at your apple apps, but actually slowly lean your ship over as you go through the atmosphere to attain a really efficient orbit. Because especially when you start lifting large payloads that weigh dozens of tons, uh, you, you save a lot of fuel doing that. So uh, yeah, I think this has covered how to get into orbit and how uh, how to deal with inclinations. If there's anything else you'd like to see, let me know. I'm just going to uh, deorbit and land this quickly, and then we will wrap this up. Because I don't like to leave things in orbit that aren't needed, and I think Jeb would like to go home. See if we can't land somewhere cool. Oh yeah, we're in point one nine now, so I can show you reentry effects. As we come screaming through the atmosphere. And right about thirty kilometers, I think, is when we'll start seeing the effects. Yeah, they are heating up. This doesn't affect the ship yet, uh, but it will eventually. So I imagine that entering at like an angle like this would probably be a bad idea. And tumbling over like this would probably also be a bad idea. But uh, it does look pretty neat. I definitely uh, put some work into creating those effects. I don't know. I can't quite figure out how or why they draw, but it's it's really cool. And yeah, that's the re-entry. We'll just bring the ship back down here. I'm gonna go for a powered landing, but I made abort. Let's move this parachute in case I need to do an abort. We'll do a pseudo-powered landing on parachute. There we go. Easy enough. So, uh, yeah, that's how you get into orbit. That's how you do inclination changes. That's why you do inclination changes. And those are the re-entry effects. Uh, this has been Gamma, thanks for watching, and if there's anything you'd like to see, just leave a comment, send me a message, make a video response, do whatever you feel, and uh, let me know, and I'll try to get that done for you. Uh, yeah, thanks.